Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tomasz and today we will continue the subject of locksteps and we will talk about the backward lockstep. Enjoy! Before we start this video, feel free to watch our video on forward lockstep. You will find the link in the description below. Now, let's go to the backward one. As you can imagine, backward and forward locksteps will be quite analogical, right? So, because we have to both do them together at the same time, doing the same turns and doing the same actions, we probably will have to create an action that will match it perfectly. We will have slight difference in the footwork, just because the backward action is different than forward action. But in the end of the day, the spread of the turn, the rise and fall, and the timing will have to be the same in order for it to work in a couple. The first thing we will discuss is your footwork, because that's when the actual, because that's when backward lockstep is slightly different than forward lockstep. We will start on the right leg and we'll go with the left foot backward. Now we will prepare the left toe backward and place it behind our body. And when we move away from the right leg, we will release the toes first and push from the heel. Now the second step, and this is when the difference is, we will also, of course, prepare backward from the toe, but we will push from the heel. And that's when there's a difference because going forward, we will go on two toes already. But we want to release the toes, push from the heels, and change it on the ball of the foot by the time we arrive to the lock position. From that, we maintain it, we maintain our feet on two toes and continue maintaining it on two toes until the last step. When we arrive to the 50-50 on the last step, we can start lowering, putting our right heel down and going to the next step. Now we have slightly different footwork because we want to achieve a maximum distance that we can cover on the second step. So similarly, like in feather step, you would get, we want to achieve that maximum spread on the second step. If you were go from the toe backward and push from the toe on the second step, you would go more up rather than across. And yes, we want to rise, but we want to rise in a very progressive way. The second thing we'll discuss is your feet alignment. So now I will start standing on my right leg. Let's assume that I just now finished the natural turn. Now the first step I will place exactly behind my left hip on two tracks. The second step I will place backward exactly behind my right hip. And again, that can be backward. That can be just slightly sideways because that's where we'll be swinging. The third step I will move across. So my left foot has to cross the line of the right foot. Notice that my feet are still parallel. I don't want to turn them in any way and make Latin feet. Now, the last step I will place exactly behind my right foot. I will place exactly behind my right hip. And again, it can be backward and it can be just slightly sideways to make sure that we will create a very nice CBMP on the last step. Of course, the second option is when we start in outside partner position. In that case, we will place the first step on the same line as the right foot, which is CBMP. The second step and third step and fourth step will follow us previously. So we'll place it behind the right hip. We will lock it or cross it. And we will place it again backward behind the right hip. Now let's go to body rotation. Again, we will have two options. If we start with closed position, we will start with the body wind up to the left. We will start turning to the right and we will be squared in the middle of the first step. We will continue turning our body to the right, so continue our CBM action, until we achieve a side lead just before we place our right foot on the floor. We will keep the same alignment when we lock and we will keep the same alignment when we go to the last step and when we lower. Now, the second variant is to start already in the outside partner position, which you might have guessed it, 
we have to keep the body exactly in the same position through the whole lock step. So again, if we start with the right foot backward, I will keep my body on one eighth angle. Uh, I will keep my body on one eighth body turn to the right and maintain it the same body angle through the whole lock step. Now let's show it sideways so you see it better. So again, option number one, we're starting with the wind up. We are starting to turn, we are square in the middle, continuing the turn, releasing the side just before the right foot is placed, maintaining the same position in the lock step and maintaining the same position in the last step and during the lowering. And the second option is when we already start in outside partner position where we just maintain the same body position all the time. Now, of course, in the basic form, the timing will have to be the same as in forward action. So slow, quick, quick, slow. Therefore, the acceleration and deceleration will be danced in the same way. So let me show you sideways how it should look. Again, just for the practice purposes, try to do it with your right hand swinging freely into the lowering and CBM action. So I'm starting on the right leg with my right arm in front. My left foot will be going backward and I will turn my body to the right. Now I want to lower and throw, which means turn my body during the first step and a half to accelerate and then decelerate through the lock and the last step. So, and slow, quick, quick, slow. Now it's very important that just because we accelerate and move backward, it it means that our body should be falling backward. Our pitch of weight should still be over the ball of the foot and we should be still quite poised forward. Yes, our whole body line will be moving backward through our feet, but it doesn't mean that we should be moving shoulder and head behind the hip and feet. That will create a very weird image that will look like you're tripping instead of you falling nicely, okay? So let me demonstrate. The first option when we're falling nicely is when I'm, my body is still presented forward, even though I'm moving backward. And the second option, I will move my shoulder and head slightly behind my hips and feet, and I will look like I'm tripping. Now, please notice that in the second version, I couldn't even keep to the timing. And yes, of course, I exaggerate but you have to make sure that your body line is still either straight or even slightly prepared forward. And then of course your legs are going behind your body, but they don't change the alignment of the postural line. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. As always, give us a thumb up if you like the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.